Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. Today's video is gonna be all about that one note, that one note that makes an ordinary line sounds like sound like a real jazz bebop line. And it really is just one note that makes all the difference. And I figured this out like many years ago, but when I did, suddenly all the lines that I played that sounded sort of random and amateurish really finally got that sound that I've been looking for. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say it's been a minute since my last video and it's partly because I've been working on a guide that goes along with this concept that I'm going to be talking about today. So if you're interested in learning more about this, be sure to check out the guide. I'll link that up uh, up above and down below. Anyway, the uh, the note actually comes from the melodic minor scale. I did another video, video about the melodic minor scale a couple uh, videos back, but let's do a quick review. So let's use D melodic minor first. Uh, this is what the scale sounds like. Okay, now the one note that is different between that D melodic minor scale and your, your standard D Dorian scale is that major seven. So in the case of D, it's that C sharp. You know, usually on a minor seven chord, you would play C natural, which is why this is a little bit counterintuitive because we're actually gonna make use of that, that C sharp. And we're gonna talk about why it works so well uh, for creating bebop lines, like the one I played at the beginning of the video. Um, but the note is C sharp. That's the secret note right there. So now let's talk about why that one note works. Say I play a line like this. Okay, so that was a two, five, one line in the key of C major. Uh, you know, I'm starting on the D minor, going to the G seven, and then going to the C major seven. But I started off with this. So I'm doing uh, E, F, C sharp, there's that C sharp, E, D. So the C sharp does a couple of things. One, it acts as an approach tone. We've talked about approach tones a lot before, but essentially what you're doing is you're targeting a specific note. In this case, we're targeting that last note right there, which is the D, the one of the D minor. So the, uh, the C sharp does a nice job of leading us in to that D. So. So again, when you play the D melodic minor scale, the C sharp leads into the D. And that's a key word right there. It's the leading tone. It leads right in to that target, to that D. And the leading tone is the seventh note of any scale that leads back into the root. So even if you take a major scale and you play, you know, say C major, that second to last note, that's the B and it leads into the C. So the leading tone leads back into the one, the root of whatever chord you're on. In uh, the case of D minor, it's C sharp going into the D. Lots of different variations. All of these are uh, very, very common. You hear this a lot in the bebop jazz vocabulary. And this is not just bebop, by the way. This stuff sounds so cool over any kind of genre of music. You know, even if you just play mostly blues licks and then all of a sudden you whip out one of these, these uh, you know, quote unquote jazzier bebop licks, it just sounds awesome, sounds really, really hip. Um, so you've got the leading tone and then you have the, uh, this other part that I wanted to talk about. When you play the C sharp, what you're actually doing is you're playing the third of the secondary dominant of D minor. What the heck was that? So the secondary dominant is like the five of whatever chord you're on. And I talked about uh, secondary dominance before, so you know, be sure to look around for that video as well if you wanna learn more about that. But if you take the five of D minor, what is that? Well, D, E, F, G, A, A. So you build an A major chord, which is the dominant. I, I know it's getting confusing here, but the point is you're playing the third of an A major chord when you play that C sharp, which is why it leads nicely into the D. Okay, that's another reason why this makes sense, why it works. You don't have to understand the theory, but if you're interested, it's good to know, because then you can better repurpose that information for other situations that might come up. But if you want to really get some cool examples of how to make use of this, uh, this line, this note, and uh, I, I think in the guide that I made, there's like, 15 examples over two five one lines, and then another 15 examples over just like a, a D minor vamp, which is super cool because a lot of the time you'll be vamping on one minor chord, like uh, if you're playing So What or Impressions or you know any uh, 
funk tune out there that just kind of vamps on D minor for however long. And you want to play things that sound different than just, you know, riffing in D minor forever. This is going to give you some, some vocabulary on how to do that. Oh, the other thing is, for all the licks, I play them with a backing track so you can hear how it sounds and then, you know, you can play along as well. It's also transposed for all the instruments, which I know a lot of people are interested in. So if you don't play alto, you know, it's it's written out for concert, it's written out for B-flat instruments, E-flat instruments, bass clef instruments. And here's the best part. I left out the best part. So not only do you get 30 licks, uh, transpose and all that, um, you know, I write a couple of, uh, you know, extra words of wisdom to help you along, but I think the best part is, that I write, I, I write out an entire solo over a very popular chord progression that uh, you know I'm sure many of you will recognize and uh, be able to tell what it is. And I do an entire solo. It's like an etude that um, uses, it makes use of this bebop note, this melodic minor scale. So uh, you know, be sure to check that out too. There's a recording of that in the package. Um, I hope you guys check it out. I think it's really cool, and I think it will really help you get your bebop lines, your jazz lines sounding really authentic and not so amateurish and random, which is kind of how I felt about my stuff, you know, before I figured this out. Anyway, I'll stop talking about it now. Um, hopefully you guys check it out. Thanks again for watching. And uh, remember, it's that melodic minor scale, that seventh scale degree that you have to be playing around with. That's a great one, to, great one to start with. Uh, that's E, F, C sharp, E, D, and I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you have fun. See you in the next video.